Hello again, I'm David Woolley, the curator from the Tank Museum, and uh, what we're going to do now is try and do you some film reviews. Uh, these are films that we've got in our shop at the Tank Museum, and which, as the time we're recording, our shop's still open for mail order, so do go online and have a look at the uh, material we have there. And uh, just remember as well, if you are going to buy things or whatever, if you buy it from the Tank Museum shop, that's helping to support us as an independent charity. And I know everyone's going through very difficult times at the moment, but uh, obviously if you buy it from us, that's great because it helps us keep going and helps us also producing all this sort of product that we'll be doing. So this time we're going to do a film review and we're going to do about Kelly's Heroes, that absolute classic tank war film. And uh, many of you out there, I don't know, may have seen Kelly's Heroes. If you haven't, it's one of those, if you are a bit of a tank fan, it's a must-see film. Uh, it was made way back in 1969. It's got on a kind of all-star class, Clint Eastwood, uh, Telly Savalis, his brothers in it. Um, various people in there that are sort of like character actors of the day and why it's often picked up on it's sort of kind of I don't know about the word phrase stood the test of time but it's it's one of those films that had some great one-liners in the script writer was a guy who made uh, Troy Martin he's a guy who actually wrote uh, things like Z cars he did a whole load of television material and he'd also did The Italian Job. It's a film, funny enough, The Italian Job was made about the same time. And uh, it's got some really good witty one-liners in. It's a slightly odd film when you see it because it's not trying to be, it's a bit of a comedy, it's a bit of a uh, sort of a bank robbery heist, all set in wartime. It's got elements to it that can seem just so ridiculous. Don't forget it's being made in the summer of 1930, uh, 1939, 1969, and of uh, course the Vietnam War's on. You've ended up with a hippie figure in there, uh, Donald Sutherland playing uh, oddball. Uh, so some of the language he comes out with, it's completely inappropriate to World War II, but it's a great character and he's got some wonderful one-liners. Uh, in the background, again, it's this peculiar situation of a bank robbery. So again, don't forget he's done the Italian job, the writer, just beforehand. And uh, that idea of it's, a, it's about a robbery, but set in a wartime setting. Now, supposedly, the story is based on a real story, which uh, was covered up after the war, which was about uh, uh, not only Americans, but uh, uh, criminals, etc., and German citizens as well, doing a massive gold bank heist at the end of the war that, that took an awful lot of time because it was covered up afterwards to come out. Um, but when it was first written as a... As a film script it was going to be called the warriors and it was uh, changed its title a couple of times like many films do um, but uh, really it's obviously a major fabrication and the sort of thing that we'd all probably if you watch it don't think you're watching it for historical accuracy in any way but it's a great romp and for tank enthusiasts it's also it's got some fantastic bits of kit in and they film it all out in Yugoslavia in 69, or not all of it, actually some film, some was done in London as well. Um, but it's filmed out there and it's just amazing the amount of kit that you can actually watch in the film if you keep your eyes open. And there's an orgy of tanks firing, destruction, all sorts of things going on, uh, which even to this day, I'm not a great one for violence on the smoothies, but it's great to watch. It really is good sort of stuff that's going on there. Um, completely improbable, implausible in so many areas, but at the same time, great fun from the point of view of the tanks. Now, the director, um, originally Clint Eastwood was going to be involved because he thought the director was going to be one of his Spaghetti Western directors. Um, but then they changed director. Brian Hutton ends up taking over. He's the guy who did Where Eagles Dare as well. And uh, again, from the point of view of the filming, they went through all the usual trials and tri tribulations when they're filming. But they particularly went to Yugoslavia, not only for the set um, and the landscape and various other things they could use and quite happily out there, but also because the Yugoslav army, one of the key reasons, still had a lot of Second World War equipment, for example, Shermans in service uh, or available to them. 
and that made it a really good fit place to be able to go and see. So again, if you're a bit of a tank fan, bit of a tank buff, there's certain shots in there where you're going, oh, good grief, it's not just one or two Shermans, it's great columns of Shermans. There's some lovely amounts of equipment being shown all the time. And again, if you are a bit of a military enthusiast, look at all that equipment because in about 95% of the cases, this is real stuff they're using, not replica. Um, apart from, of course, where we have in the film three mock-up tigers. Now, those tigers were done up by the Yugoslav army. They're basically underneath his T-3485s and they've been done up to look like tiger tanks. But they made, and this was another thing for this film, they made more of an effort than perhaps was usual with war films, including tanks in the 1960s. Actually here, they made a real effort to make those things try and look a bit like a tiger tank. And um, certainly the, the issues around the fact that Sherman's fighting tigers um, was taken quite seriously. Now the Shermans you'll see in there, um, they're M4, A3, E4s and uh, basically what model is that? So those were Shermans that were done up post-World War II as part of a mutual aid program that was being done for, by the Americans for various European countries. Um, to help re-equip their armies and basically at the time try and stave off communism. So what on earth are those tanks doing in Tito's communist Yugoslavia? Um, so the idea, the story behind that is what was going on was Tito fell out with Stalin in about 47 and um, as part of a way of trying to woo him and keep his independence away from um, Stalin's communist Russia, um, what happens is people like Truman, they end up sort of trying to give Tito, they, 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 they actually try and big him up as it were, they, they give him support and one of the bits of that support is by giving him military aid. Hence the Shermans are actually shipped out to Yugoslavia um, and they're part of an aid package that begins at the uh, end of the 40s, early 50s. And that's why those Shermans are there. Now, this particular model Sherman, when you look at it, and again, there's lots of the lovely ones there that you can see in the film. When you look at them, you'll notice some differences from standard ones. Basically, what they took were the 75mm gun Shermans with wet stowage. They took those ones and put a 76mm gun on them, but without the standard muzzle brake that we're used to seeing on tanks like our Fury tank at the museum. So at the end of the barrel, you'll see there's a little collar where you'd end up screwing on um, the threading at the end of the barrel where you'd be screwing on the muzzle brake. You can, have a, you can see there's a collar there, but the muzzle brakes aren't being used on those Shermans with the 76 millimeter gun. They've got, uh, again, gun locks that you'll see on a number of them as well, and other smaller features that were done as part of this program of, of kind of revamping Shermans to send around to, to mainly European countries and to be used. Um, so those tanks that are in there, as I mentioned, there's, they, they go up against, there's other vehicles in the background as you go around, you've got half tracks, you've got all sorts of things, you've got German uh, artillery as well, is, it was during the course of it. Um, having said that, the irony for us as, as tank enthusiasts, really good to see real tanks being used in so many of these scenes and in quite large numbers. Ironically though, at the same time, there's bits of the film where things like language is language that's used that is completely inappropriate to World War II and again towards the end there's scenes there where uh, the supposed French citizens i.e. the uh, the local Yugoslavian extras who turn up to help out you've got girls in mini skirts you've got all sorts of things going on bouffant hairdos from the 60s you've got glasses that would never have been worn at that particular time um, so it's a bit of a sort of mix as you go through but I say all that without too much of a criticism great music as well Lalo Schifrin, who did things like Mission Impossible music. There's that song at the end, which again sort of ended up going in the charts, Burning Bridges. That became a really popular song as well at the time. And uh, there's, there's bits about the whole film that just if you like your tanks, it's great. It's great fun to watch. Um, it's a bit odd in places in the sense of, you know, you get some of the... The, the, the bank heist lot end up getting killed, but at the same time, it's sort of done as a bit of a jokey film in many other areas. Um, but it's one of those ones that, 
you come back to and you still enjoy it and you suddenly find yourself if you're a bit of a nerd like me watching again going oh good grief I then notice that lot again and uh, and things that you know again pick apart there's plenty of nice websites out there that actually here and there they they start telling you you know what you're looking at so what is that plane that comes and strays from actually it's a Yugoslav training plane um, but it's piston engine looks apart in a certain sort of way you know whereas in other areas you've got some really good authentic kit and I wouldn't be surprised most of that kit the Germans are wearing is probably sort of captured real wartime stuff rather than just sort of um, props department but here and there you can see, see where other bits of more modern equipment is being used and integrated into the movie. So one that I would strongly recommend, um, some of the one-liners in it have spawned, you know, Oddball's one-liners have spawned a million t-shirts out there. Um, and again, I wouldn't be surprised if you've got things like that we can probably buy from our shop as well. But uh, if you are going to buy a copy, um, try and buy it from our tank museum shop and you'd be doing us a great big favour. Um, but one of those tank war films you really ought to have seen. And if you haven't seen it for a while, order a copy and have a sit down. We've all got time on our hands at the moment. So it'd be a good time to actually watch it all over again. We are a charity here at the Tank Museum, so if you can support us, please do. Consider joining our Patreon scheme or becoming a member of the Friends. Any donations will go directly towards the Tank Museum and its activities.